The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Environmental solutions company ICAT hosted live fire demonstrations last month, showcasing several fire suppression technologies recently introduced to the industry. These demonstrations focused on the importance of adopting effective fire suppression solutions that are specifically designed for special fire risks. Mia Breitenbach tells us more. ICAT hosted the event at the CSIR's Kloppersbos Fire and Explosion Test Training Research and Development Facility in the north of Pretoria. At the event, Fire Investigation Services Consultant Alexis Besson emphasised the risk of fire from flammable liquids and resulting explosions. He suggested preventative and reactive measures which can be applied to reduce fire risks or mitigate fire damage. The risks are always there. The problem with fire is it threatens life, you know. Um, People can get injured, people can get burn wounds. Um, underground, it's a massive risk because underground you can't escape and it also takes away the air you breathe. Um, it's probably one of the biggest, biggest risks underground. Um, then also, fires happen very quickly. People underestimate it, they don't estimate the speed. Second biggest risk in mining is electrical fires, which cause a lot of damage. Industry, my experience, which I've got, is probably more flammable liquids, um, spray booths, methane, hexane, those sort of things. If you've got a flammable gas that um, escaped um, and is ignited, you can have a big loss um, fairly rapidly. So, yeah, I would say probably flammable liquids and then maybe a gas explosions in coal mines. Mm -hmm you have to go absolutely out of your way to prevent um, fires. So in hazardous environments, make sure you comply with the law, make sure that your all electrical stuff is um, fireproof or flame proof and so on. Um, keep away combustible materials from ignition sources. Um, <clears throat> make sure that you've got very good fire detection via very good fire suppression. Um, various solutions for various industries, but I think um, effective firefighting in mining would be foam and water mist. Technology showcase included the fire trace self-activating fire detection and suppression systems that suppress fires within seconds, as well as ICAT's T-Rotor technology water and foam misting solutions. It also included localised protection and vehicle protection systems. ICAT Fire Division Manager Andrew Gibbard led the demonstrations in the red and safe zones. He explains the applications of ICAT T-Rotor technology, water mist solutions. We've demonstrated fixed systems that the guys use in the conveyor systems, underground in the mines and also surface mining. Um, a localised protection system that uh, protects either the head or the take up or the tail of the conveyor. And we also demonstrated on transformers. And then we uh, demonstrated a technology called Fire Trace, um, direct low pressure systems. It's an in cabinet fire detection and suppression system which detects automatically and suppresses the fire with an agent called Novik 1230. And then we did some demonstrations outside with uh, water mist extinguishers and our Roto Fire Pack um, that's for fast response and uh, um, rotor teams on the mines when it's hard to reach places they can actually take this 12 litre backpack system and they have the capability and the same performance as a 500 litre firefighting unit. Additionally ICA demonstrated the vehicle fire suppression system. The company started a fire inside an engine and then manually activated the suppression system to extinguish the fire and cool down the machine. Gibbert also explained the unique features of the water and foam mist solutions. Well firstly it's in environmental friendly so all of the systems operate with water as an agent and then we've got an environmental friendly foam mixture that we add to it, our own foam mixture called Telesolf and we added at 
uh, uh, dosing. Normally they would add a foam mixture at 3% in the, in the industry. So ours is a little bit um, better qu quality foam and it's environmental friendly rated. So to refill the system is actually a lot cheaper than a powder system or a CO2 system that's currently out in the market. Other news making headlines this week, Labour Minister Mildred Olyphant lobbies business to embrace centralised wage bargaining. South Africa's rejected mine water plan deprived 7,000 people of jobs and mine mechanisation that's linked to local equipment retains jobs. Labour Minister Mildred Olyphant continues to back the centralised wage bargaining model as the most suitable mechanism through which the country's fractious labour relations contentions can be deliberated and solved. Centralised collective bargaining is the best tool to negotiate or discuss whatever challenges that are there uh, in the workplace, including the safety and healthy issues in the companies. And therefore, I will encourage that you discuss these issues uh, with organized labor so that we can be able to bring the stability in the workplace in this country. The rejection of a still workable mine water and slimes dam plan at the stricken Grootvle gold mine on Gauteng's East Rand deprived 7,000 squatter camp dwellers of employment and set the mine on its downward trajectory. We also went to make sure that the solutions which now could be used for agricultural use had some useful, real practical use. We went to Pretoria University and discussed it with the agricultural people. We went to the co-op, the East Grand co-op and discussed it with them. And we discussed it with a lot of you know, specialist agricultural people and they said no problem, particularly if you use a drip irrigation technique. And the amount of water involved was something of the audit would have given jobs to about 7,000, 8,000 people in the squatter camp just outside Hrutle. So we thought this was a winner. And we went off and we put in the proposal and then they said it's been turned down. So we went to see the Department of Water Affairs and we interviewed the man in charge. And effectively he said to us, over my dead body, will any water be used for agriculture until everybody in the country has got proper domestic water supply? Resource development strategist Dr. Paul Jordan has called for the local manufacture of mechanised mining equipment to neutralise job losses during the switch to machines. Mechanisation massively increases the quality of work in mines. Fully mechanised platinum, which is at about 200,000 workers, could end up with only 100,000. And we say, no, 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 we need jobs. But the fin showed it could be job neutral, except the jobs are now in the factories. They're not num jobs or AMCU jobs now, they're NUMSA jobs. So mechanisation could be job neutral, that's important for us. Provided the capital goods are manufactured locally, and there we have a big problem. Our mining companies are developing with foreign companies. These jobs, when we mechanise, will leak. They're not developing our OEMs. We need to say these are our minerals you'll develop in-house, in-country. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.